So a couple of weeks ago, we took a look at the new Canon RF100 300 lens, really, really nice telephoto lens, f2.8 all the way through. But something else that happened around the same sort of time is there was quite a nice firmware update for the Canon R5 and the R3. And we're mostly going to look at the R5 today, although we'll cover the R3 as well, because there's some interesting things there. We're going to run through what's new in this update, what you get out of it. I actually think it's pretty exciting, especially for the R5. There's some pretty cool things in there that we're going to talk about. First up, let's talk about the headline feature on the R5 firmware update, and that is 400 megapixels. Ooh. Okay, that's obviously a big number. There are a couple of caveats, but essentially you are now able to take 400 megapixel high resolution images using the R5. Now the way it does this is a special mode that'll take a series of images by actually moving the sensor slightly using the image stabilization system, and then kind of put those together to simulate having smaller pixels to give you the effect of 400 megapixels. Now it's not actually gonna be exactly the same as if you had a 400 megapixel sensor, but honestly, when you're talking about that kind of resolution, I think it's pretty cool that you can do that at all. And this is a great way of getting some extremely high resolution shots. Now, the caveats I mentioned are, ideally you wanna be using this on a tripod, you would have to be really, really steady with your hands to actually be able to do this handheld. But for the most part, Canon recommend just popping this on a tripod. And obviously you don't wanna be using a moving subject. You wanna have a nice still subject. So maybe landscape if there's not too many trees moving around or anything like that, or certainly things like fine art, architecture, this is gonna be great for. And one of the biggest kind of advantages of using this system is your ability to then crop it in. Now you can already do that with the R5. It's already got a lovely big resolution, but with 400 megapixels, you really can crop in for some serious detail and get right in there. You can probably get a few different images out of one image. Or of course, if you want to print on the side of a skyscraper, this is the best way to do it. Otherwise, we see a few other features as well added in. So for example, images transferred via FTP are gonna be protected by things like a screen lock, and you can also crop and resize during the transfer. It adds the ability to save and load communication settings on a card, so like on the R3 or the 1DX Mark III. And along with that, there's some bug fixes in there as well. So for me, the main thing there, the headline feature of this firmware update is that big 400 megapixel mode where you can do that high resolution image like that. Now on the R3, we see the same things with the FTP and the communication settings that we just talked about on the R5, but there's a few really cool things on here as well. So for example, there's a new panning assist mode. This gives you better image stabilization for panning. So if you want to do a panning shot of a fast moving subject, which can look really cool, an image like this, for example, the image stabilization is going to work better while doing it. And subject blur correction can actually be applied during the exposure. So it's just going to help you out. Panning like that can be a little bit tricky sometimes. It can be a bit hit and miss, but this should increase your hit rate and give you more good photos. Canon are also saying that this means you should be able to use shutter speeds realistically up to two stops slower. And that means there's a big improvement in that image stabilization when it comes to panning specifically. Another thing added in, which is very cool, is that you can pre-register up to 10 faces or 10 people when you're doing subject detection. So for example, if you were shooting a wedding or an event or sports or something like that, where there are priority people who are gonna be photographing, but they might be around other people, you can actually pre-register their faces in the camera beforehand to actually mark them as a priority. So you can do up to 10 people. So for example, at a wedding, you might do the bride and the groom, some of the family, up to 10 people. And then when you're taking photos, of course, you can still use face and eye detect on other people as well, but you can prioritize those people you know you want to be taking the majority of the photos off. This is great for sport as well. If there are certain people you want to definitely be picking out and not getting anyone else in the crowd or the people around them or anything like that. So this is a great tool for professional photographers doing events, weddings, sports, all kinds of stuff like that. I think it's a really useful thing to have in a camera like the R3. So let's talk about how you update your firmware. It's actually super easy. You just want to make sure you have a fully charged battery on your camera just so that it doesn't run out of charge while you're doing it. Maybe format a memory card as well so you've got a nice clean memory card to use. Head over to Canon's support website where you can download the firmware and then you can just pop that onto your memory card, pop it in the camera and actually follow the steps on your camera to update the firmware or you can use the EOS utility software as well on your computer if you'd rather do it that way. But it is very, very straightforward like that. Everything's laid out on the website and in fact in steps on your camera as well. And as long as you have a nice charged up battery, you shouldn't run into any problems. Of all the things in the firmware update, what excites you the most? 400 megapixels? panning assist with the image stabilization, pre-registering 10 faces. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what excites you about that kind of stuff. It's great to see firmware updates like this happening because it just makes cameras that are already very good. I mean, I love the R5. 
right? That is such a good camera. It just makes them even better. You can check out a link to the R5 itself and the R3 in the description down below. So you can go and check those out for yourself with all the spec and all that fun stuff. I'll see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.